What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. Today, I have a very special guest who's gonna tell us all about the field of gastroenterology, uh, why he went into it, and also some tips for you guys. Um, it's funny because me and uh, Dr. Campbell have been going back and forth uh, trying to get this scheduled for, for some time now. We're actually both at the hospital. I'm, I'm on a call, on trauma call, about to go do a case here uh, soon. That's about to uh, go to the operating room and Dr. Campbell's on call at the hospital as well. But uh, appreciate you coming on tonight, man. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to the uh, viewers out there and t tell us who you are and kind of what you do. Gotcha, yeah, so my name is Earl Campbell. I'm a third year gastroenterology fellow. Uh, so I went to med school at University of Maryland. Actually, I'll start back with undergrad. I did undergrad at Howard University, med school at the University of Maryland. Uh, I stayed there for my residency. So I was there for three years for my residency after I uh, graduated from uh, med school. And then I stayed an additional year. I was selected to be one of the chief residents. So I was there for an additional four years total, three years for residency, one year as a chief resident. And then now I'm here at Yale doing my uh, gastroenterology fellowship. Uh, so gastroenterology and hepatology is the, the full title. So that covers digestive diseases, including the, the liver as well. Um, and this fellowship is a three-year program. Uh, I'll be staying on after this third year. I matched uh, for an advanced fellowship focused on advanced interventional endoscopy. So when all said and done, I'll be about eight years yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I'll try to add it up. You're like at what, PGY7 now? PGY, yep, PGY7. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Um, yeah, so what was it about uh, GI? Did you always know that you wanted to do GI or uh, kind of fell into it? Yeah. So I got my interest in GI um, started during first year of med school. Uh -huh. um, I was really just fascinated by the physiology of the, the GI tract. Um, starting, I'd say, my intern year of uh, residency, uh, I was still on the fence deciding between gastroenterology and um, pulmonary critical care. So both of those fields, I like the, the mix between the, your internal medicine background that you have and like the critical thinking that goes into it. And then both of those fields, those subspecialties of medicine uh, have a procedural component to it. So they're very hands-on in pulmonology, it's a lot more bronchoscopies. Um, in, in gastroenterology, it's endoscopies, colonoscopies. Um, and so I like that mix of thinking as well as the, the procedures. And also I'm just finding myself that I'm someone that probably that I would say I get bored easily. So I like the variety, you know, yeah. it's uh, not too many specialties where you get to cover so many organs in one specialty, you know, so you have esophagus, stomach, yeah. small intestines, colon, gallbladder, pancreas, liver. Uh, so it's a very uh, all encompassing field. So that's what I really liked about it. Gotcha. So to become a gastroenterologist, it requires um, four years of med school and then three to four years of residency for internal medicine? Yeah, so three year internal medicine residency. So, you know, if mine was longer than fourth year because of the chief year, but if you just did internal medicine residency, you can then apply and then go into gastroenterology. So three years of internal medicine mm -hmm. and then three years of gastroenterology and hepatology fellowship. Okay, and for the people who don't know what a chief year is, um, it's basically a, if I've had to sum it up, a additional year after your three years where you're, you're doing more a um, um, leadership role? Is that yeah, kind of? Leadership, administrative, scheduling, doing a lot of the teaching of the residents, doing like morning reports where you discuss cases, you discuss topics. So, uh, and then you even spend some time during that year as an attending physician on service. So awesome. that was really a great learning experience because you go from during your residency, you know, you kind of always, at the end of the day, you kind of have someone to fall back on. Your intern, you have your resident, your resident, you have your attending. Yeah. Um, but during your chief year, you spent some time attending on service. And so like, you're it, you know? Yeah. So now you have the residents, interns asking you questions and you're 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 running the team, you know? Yeah. So it was a, a, a great learning experience as well. Gotcha. And then you apply for GI fellowship. And from my understanding, GI is really competitive to get into. Uh, yeah, it's is that the most competitive uh, subspecialty of medicine. Why do you think that is? Um, one, the number of spots. And then two, I think how medicine is, the changes in medicine that have been taking place. Um, I feel that non-procedural specialties have seemed like they've been taking quite a, a hit in terms of compensation. So it feels like cardiology, especially interventional cardiology, pulmonology, interventional pulmonology, gastroenterology, um, the 
the pay, the compensation that you receive is is pretty high. And so I think that's one of the things that, you know, it's an interesting field. You do a lot of procedures. And so then you get compensated well for those procedures. Um, and so I think that's one of the things that, that people um, like about the field. Plus, I would say, you know, it has a pretty good, pretty good lifestyle. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Uh, well, so speaking about lifestyle, what, what kind of, uh, I know you're still in your fellowship, but what is a typical day? How do your days usually look? Gotcha. Yeah, so that depends on the, the rotation that I'm on. So we rotate between first year, a fellowship is mostly all inpatient services. Um, and so, for example, if I'm on the Yale inpatient gastroenterology service, uh, I come in the morning, um, see any consults that were um, uh, called in overnight that were non-emergent. So if they're emergent, then the fellow that's on call overnight will see those patients. And then anyone that could wait till the morning, I'll go and see those patients. Uh, in the morning, typically, we'll have a few outpatient um, procedures, uh, and then the rest of the day is inpatient cases. So really, you're kind of running between the endoscopy suite and doing cases, and then in between cases, um, running around to different areas of the hospital to go see patients that um, the other teams have called you about, whether it's someone in the ICU, the medical floor, they'll call you, for example, hey, we have someone with the gastrointestinal lead, you'll go, you'll assess that patient, um, and then you'll see whether they need a procedure at all, or if they need a procedure, how urgent it needs to be done, whether you need to bring them down to do the procedure right then. Sometimes if it's in the critical care unit and they're too unstable, you may uh, take our cart up there and we can scope at the bedside. Um, so on a consult service, it's really just a mixture of doing cases, and then you really got to be efficient and try and squeeze in, in between seeing new patients that they call you for, for help with. Um, if I'm on an outpatient uh, service, and sometimes it's a mix between, say, example, one morning I may have I may have clinic that morning, then I head over to we have a separate outpatient endoscopy suite, and then we'll you know I may do some outpatient procedures there. Those tend to be more routine screening colonoscopies for colon cancer, um, sometimes for some bleeding that doesn't warrant someone being in the hospital. Um, and you may be wondering, so why are you doing some outpatients also in the hospital? So in our outpatient center, those are more. Um, Patients that are don't have as many medical problems. Someone that's very ill, um, if they're very obese, they have sleep apnea, you're concerned about them um, maintaining a, a good airway, um, then you'd have those patients that are more at risk for complications from anesthesia. You want to do those patients here in the hospital as opposed to uh, in an outpatient endoscopy suite. Gotcha. Makes sense. Uh, so gastroenterology, um, what are some typical procedures? You mentioned kind of um, um, like a colonoscopy or a scope. What are some different procedures that you, you do as a you know, doctor? Well, the, the bread and butter of gastroenterology, of course, is colonoscopy for colon cancer screening. Um, also, upper endoscopies. In the inpatient side, we do a ton of endoscopies. Um, probably one of the most common calls. So outpatient, the procedures are a lot of times colonoscopies, colon cancer screening on the inpatient side. A lot of the calls, at least on the general gastroenterology service, is bleeding. People that have, they're bleeding in their digestive tract, usually from an ulcer, exposed vessel. Um, and then patients with cirrhosis can get these enlarged vessels in their esophagus called varices. Um, and those are emergent procedures that need to be done. It's a life or death issue. Um, so a lot of the times in the hospital, I say the, the, the biggest thing is doing upper endoscopies where we go down with the camera into the uh, mouth, the esophagus, the stomach. In the small intestines, we look to see where someone's bleeding from, and then we stop the bleeding. Um, usually, the three of the methods we can use for bleeding, there's a bleeding ulcer. We can either burn it, we can inject, or we can clip it. If we uh, usually we try and use any two of those three modalities together um, to decrease the risk of someone bleeding again. And if someone has a varic, which is a large, think of it as like a varicose vein, someone has in their leg, they can have in their esophagus, it can rupture and bleed. We have a, these, uh, a ligator, a banding device, where these rubber bands, we put on the end of our scope and then we use it to tie off the, the vessel. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, that's the general gastroenterology procedure. This is our one of our uh, endoscopy suites here. So this is um, one of our advanced endoscopy rooms and that's because we have this big floral machine here. So the patient lays on this bed um, and then we have live x-ray that we use during the procedure so we can see more passing stents and those things in. So from an advanced endoscopy standpoint, sometimes you're placing stents, say someone has a blockage in their esophagus or their small intestines, you put in a stent to open up that area. Sometimes people have a gallstone that gets blocked in their duct and we go in and we put in um, 
we go in and remove those those stones. And actually, I think here's actually a you can see here. This is a, an esophageal stent. So if someone has esophageal cancer, it's blocking their esophagus. They can't swallow. We can go in and you can kind of see there. Um, it's like a mesh, a metal that we put into the esophagus and then it expands and it opens up and allows them to be able to eat again. Oh, grab. Does that stay in place? Uh, yeah, it stays in place. So these right here, this one is uh, fully covered. So the fully covered ones, they have um, a coating on it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those can migrate. We have, um, you can also suture them in to help them stay in place. And actually, we usually don't have this in this room, but I see here there's a endoscopic suturing device um, that we have. So um, that's something that's also being used more. We even have actually some some sutures here. Uh, oh, that's pretty cool, yeah. From Apollo. So for um, now, something that's becoming bigger in, in gastroenterology too, especially with some of the advanced endoscopists, is actually being able to endoscopically um, place stitches through the scope. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, and that, that's pretty cool, Dr. Uh, Campbell. You're the first person who's actually given a little small tour <laughs> uh, or have some prompts to show. That's awesome, man. Uh, everybody's going to really appreciate that. Um, yeah. So after you do your oh, soap room right down the hall. Yeah. <laughs> after you do your residency, your, uh, your med school residency, and then fellowship, I know it varies by location. How much can a uh, GI doctor expect to make? Um, so there's a big difference, I'd say, between academics yeah. And um, uh, what should I say? Um, academics in, in the private setting. So in the private, in the academic setting, you can, you're actually you're making like hundreds of thousands of dollars less, mm -hmm. I would say. So average for gastroenterology though, just looking at the Medscape numbers, I think gastroenterology is in the, when I last looked for the updated slides for this year, is like in the top four specialties. Um, and the, it was like mid 400s was the average, mid 400 thousands. Um, if you're starting academics in the Northeast in this region, you can start probably maybe like in like, especially if you're looking at New York City in that area, maybe like 250,000 academics. If you're down South, um, probably can start around 300, mid 300, like 300,000, 350,000. If you go into private practice now, you can often, depending on where you are, you can be making 400, 500,000. Um, and when you make partner, if you join a private group, the first two years, your salary, you can be getting 300, mid 300,000. When you make partner, so you actually a partner in the group, the business, you all are splitting the, the, the revenue. I mean, there's a significant jump, probably can make um, like 500,000, you know, depending gotcha. on the location. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for those out there that either want to go into med school or even who are interested in GI, uh, what kind of advice would you have for them? Yeah. So for, if you're in med school, you're interested in gastroenterology, um, I would say what I did during my fourth year of med school, I did a, a way rotation in gastroenterology. So um, trying to do an you know, experience, doing an elective on that, on that service or rotation. Um, and then also, I would say as early as possible, try and find a, a mentor. So someone at your hospital that's uh, in gastroenterology, that you can kind of talk to and kind of lead you through the, the pathway. Uh, and then also if you can get involved in some research. So I did some research, really I think if I remember, it seems so, so long ago, but the only summer I think is between first and second year of, of med school. And at that time I did some research in um, oncology. I was interested in oncology at that time. Uh, I did some like head and neck cancer research. It was interesting because then it kind of can tie into you know uh, gastroenterology, but I'd say try and doing some some research. Um, you can spend some of the time during between your first summer, between first and second year, doing some research, finding a mentor in residency. I would say um, getting a, a mentor as well early if you hadn't had one from med school or if you're at a new location now. Um, so during intern year, it's going to be very tough to actually do research. Some people are excellent at it, and I know people that do a very good job. But intern year, you're just I think it's very busy. I would say something that I've told people is try and get the, the low-lying fruit during your intern year. And what I mean by that is um, things like case reports. So for example, um, it's an interesting case report. It's an interesting case um, that unique or sometimes rare, and you just basically write up a story about it. Basically, you put it in a medical journal so other providers can, can learn about it. And so in gastroenterology, a lot of times you have these interesting cases, but the attendings and physicians are sometimes just so busy, they don't have time to write it up. 
And so it can be as easy as just emailing an attending saying, hey, do you have any interesting cases? And they're like, hey, you know, actually last week I saw X, Y, Z. And then they can give you the information, you can write it up. And that could be a pretty quick um, publication right there. Um, and because the research part is going to take more time. But during your first year of medicine, you know, your intern year, you also want to try and lay the groundwork for what type of research you want to do. Because at the beginning of your second year, you want to really hit the ground running on a research project. Um, because it, the time to apply actually comes, comes up on you quicker than you know it. So pretty much between your second and third year that summer, you got to start applying. So you pretty much have your intern year and then second year and then you're applying already. Um, so you want to kind of have start on some research early. And I've noticed more, seems like quite a bit now, people are actually some, taking a, a gap year where after they finish residency and then they spend a year um, working as a hospitalist, for example, and that would give them additional year. Then that way they have now third year to also do some research to also spend some more time on the GI service so that they can get letters of recommendation. Um, so. Gotcha. Um, is that the only route to go to GI is for be internal medicine? Yes. Okay, there's no direct uh, to uh, straight to GI like a, a straight path. So there is a path, actually interesting, I was just sitting with one of my co colleagues down the hall. He's on a, I can't remember the name of the pathway. There is an accelerated um, track where you do two years of internal medicine and then you go straight into gastroenterology. Really? So that's something that you, um, uh, you kind of agree to from and you apply to from the, the beginning. Uh, that tends to be a bit more research focused and academic track. But yeah, you, instead of doing the full three years of medicine and going to gastroenterology, you can do, if you get into one of these or you match one of these programs, you do two years of internal medicine and then go straight into gastroenterology fellowship. Got you. All right, cool. Um, three last questions I ask of all of my guests. You can give a, you may want a two-word answer. Um, what is your favorite food? Oxtail. Oxtail. Oh, yeah. nice. Um, <laughs> what is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? Um... Spend time with my family, my kids. Got you. My, my kids, yeah. Yeah, you, you have twins, is that correct? Yeah, two oh. twins, they're um, about 19 month, old, 19 month old. Yeah, that's awesome. Old, yeah. And uh, what is your favorite, do you have a particular area of GI that interests you the most? Uh, yeah, so uh, of course, you know, advanced endoscopy. Um, it's still a lot of areas within advanced endoscopy I like, I'd say, uh, I'm very interested in, I like enteral stenting. So like if someone has a blockage in their esophagus or their small intestine or colon going in and putting in a stent, just because it's very satisfying. You have someone that comes in, they're, you know, pain, they can't, um, they can't eat, they can't swallow sometimes, they're vomiting up everything. You put in the stent the next morning, they're like eating toast, eggs. I mean, <laughs> they feel like they're living the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. Dr. Campbell, I appreciate it, man, uh, joining me tonight. Um, if anybody wanted to get in touch with you or have questions about GI, is there a way they can get in touch with you? Yeah, you can reach out to me at earl.campbell, E-A-R-L dot C-A-N-P-B-E-L-L -L, at yale.edu. And you can also reach me um, on my Instagram account. It's Earl Campbell MD. All right, cool. And I'll put the links to the, uh, both of those in the description. Uh, Dr. Campbell, I appreciate it, man. Um, I always tell people, um, you know, doing this, you know, I meet a lot of people and come across different people. I've never met a black uh, gastroenterologist, so that's uh, definitely an inspiration to a lot of people out there, man. Oh, thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, appreciate it. it. And for everyone else, uh, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. We'll see you next time.